All right. Well, we are racing again, this time in NorCal, Northern California. We are just rolling through four laps to go. This is the Land Park Criterium up north. It's pretty much the first r real race of the year for NorCal. They had an early bird practice crit last weekend, but this is the first legitimate race of the year. So you can see it's kind of an oval course with a little chicane at the top, uh, the back side of the course there, just to add a little bit of, um, to make it technical. There's my teammate, Sean, just on the left there. He's bridging up to the break. Um, I race for a team called cyclesport.com up north. And down south, I'm, I'm with uh, Bart Clifford and the Evoke team, Evoke Masters Racing. But um, because I'm a NorCal rider, it benefits me to race on a NorCal team. Then I can accumulate points. And the points that I do win actually go towards the team towards the best all-around team best all-around rider points so we kind of formed a team with um a collection of riders from the make-a-wish and the cognition team and it ended up being like 17 riders so we have a pretty a pretty large team but not all of them will be racing every weekend there's four of us there today um there's myself, Sean Smith, Scott Bronsted, and Greg Tripoli drove down from um, from um, Boise, Idaho area. And that was his first race of the year as well. So, you know, it's like um, everybody's probably pretty fit from riding and doing Swift, but uh, it's always a little sketchy in that first race of the year with the bike handling skills. But, you know, this one wasn't too bad. There was... Uh, there was no crashes that I that I can recall. Um, it was pretty safe, pretty fast. I think we averaged 26 and a half miles an hour, which with the chicane in the back is actually pretty good. The big teams, uh, they have us combine the 35s and the 50s. And the two, the main, main big teams there are um, the Touchstone shoot XL Sports team there. Um, that's one of them right in front of me. So that was my, that's Mike Sayers right there. Um, the Thirsty Bear had like nine riders, um, a mixed match of 50s and 35s. So it made for an interesting dynamic. Um, Mark Tucker was there with his team. They're all the younger guys, except for uh, one of his teammates, Jeff Jeff Qual. He he's a uh, he's actually sixty plus, but he's a really strong uh, state champion. There's our old buddy Jerome. Jerome's kind of one of their fast sprinters. They also had another sprinter on their team named Derek. He was a thirty five plus, but. Um, He's a really fast sprinter. He ended up getting second on the day. I've done this race so many times. It's uh, I know that it's not super hard to move up, especially on the backside. So um, I do like to stay a little bit towards the front like this, at least in the top 15 guys, so that if you get too far back and it gets really strung out, then it's a little bit harder to move up. But I kind of just floated near the front. Anytime I got a little too far back, I would just move back up. Our team tactics, uh, Sean and Scott, um, they were either going to go with breaks or they would stitch them back up to keep it together. And they, they both did just an excellent job. Scott was in multiple breaks, super aggressive. Uh, Sean, he was in actually in a really good break in the last few laps, but it got brought back. I don't know if they just weren't working together or the field behind just chased him down. But uh, And then if it all came back together, then he was going to do a lead out for me. So I was just kind of uh, keeping my powder dry, so to speak, and wait for the sprint. So I'm in a pretty good spot here, just kind of floating behind Jerome. 
I'm not sure if anybody's going to do a lead out. Um, Thirsty Bear definitely had the numbers. I thought maybe they, if they didn't get a break off, they would they would do a lead out for their sprinters, but didn't end up working out that way. I'm not sure why. They definitely have the horsepower to do it. There's our 55 plus state champion. Uh, that's Rick Lawton, formerly of Make a Wish. Now he's with Thirsty Bear. Thirsty Bear kind of absorbed a few of the the Make a Wish guys that didn't come with us on Cycle Sport. See, there's just a one attack after another. Every time the pace would ease up, boom, someone would attack. And definitely set alarm bells off with that one. So, but Sean, that's the one that Sean made it up in. So both Scott and I were not as motivated to chase that one down. So we kind of just hung back behind the Thirsty Bear guys, made them do the chase. Which is a good place to be because, um, you know, I don't have to do the work and I can just kind of sit behind and they can... If if Sean gets away in that group, I like his chances in a sprint. If he doesn't, then I like my chances in a sprint. So it just kind of worked out that way. There wasn't a lot of wind. It wasn't very windy, but it was definitely a beautiful day. Low 60s, sunny. As you can see, most people have... No leg warmers, no arm warmers. There's my teammate Scott Bromstead there on the right. And then the dark red. Dark red and black is our kit this year up north. We just had our NorCal team camp uh, in Lodi last a couple weekends prior. And it was just raining the entire weekend. But... It was definitely a good bonding experience to get to know the guys. And uh, I really, really think this team's going to do well this year. You know, once we get everybody there, they definitely have some horsepower. Um, one of our, one of our riders is Steve Rainey, who's a former elite national criterium champion. And I think if I'm not mistaken, he won every race he entered every masters race that he entered last year except for one, and that was San Rafael because his teammate was in the break and his teammate won. That's when they were on cognition. So definitely going to be excited to race with Steve. Um, never never really been able to race with him because when I was a master, just coming up, he had, I think he had already stopped racing. And there's Dave Kasel. Um, he ends up winning the race outright. Um, he makes a really good move towards the last corner. He's going to make a little little hook move right there. I don't know what the heck he was doing, but no reason to do that because he's so strong. You know, he still ends up winning the race anyway, so I don't know why you need to do that, that kind of a tactic. It's just dangerous and it's going to make people crash. But especially at Masters, it's just a beer league hockey ride, you know. We're not pros. I pushed a little wide on that left turn there, so now I gotta work my way back up front. This is the back side of Bell Lap. We're going. We have two two turns to go essentially, and then it's a drag race to the finish. So I'm a little too far back here, so I'm gonna move up on the left. Um, I don't see either one of my teammates, so I'm just gonna kind of take matters into my own hands and. Um, There's Mike Sayers. Uh, there goes Super Dave. There goes Mike. So I'm going to jump on that wheel right there. And this is going to be my lead out, so to speak. So they start to sprint. And then Mike almost, well, right there, Mike almost runs into the back of Dave. And then I almost run into the back of Mike. And then when Mike, when David jumps, uh, there's a little bit of a hesitation. I kind of get hooked a little bit to the left. So I'm all the way over in the curb. But I finally have a. A way through there so super dave wins the race outright in the 35s and then i get first in the 50s so first win of the year pretty excited